the Joe Rogan experience. Glad you brought up hot baths because that's something that I wanted to cover before we got off track. When we're talking about sauna, when people that don't have access to a sauna, how much benefit can they get out of a hot bath? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because there was, a, you know, so a, a couple of things. One, um, there was a study that showed hot baths can have an antidepressant effect. And these people were put in uh, 104 degrees um, Fahrenheit bath where they were up to their shoulders for like 20 to 30 minutes and um the sham control was like a green light like so people thought they were getting a treatment they were getting some kind of green light therapy or whatever you know so it was a placebo control because placebo effects definitely are real particularly with depression um and it 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 had a, a pretty powerful antidepressant effect very similar to charles raison study with the the hyperthermic chamber thing um and but, when you say antidepressant, there's no real way to measure that. Other they have than... this whole, yeah. I mean, so there are some, con there's potential biomarkers being identified, C-reactive protein being one, inflammation. Mm -hmm. Inflammation plays a, there is like a huge link now between the immune system and chronic inflammation and depression, brain function in general, brain aging, but inflammation. So, I mean, that's, um, the there is there's a push for a looking, but not all depressed patients have it. It's like there's a subset of C-reactive protein. But yeah, depression's measured. It's a very much like, a you know, have someone. So a, a subjective measurement would be an, a clinical a, cl a clinical person like measuring a, a whole battery of things they do. Um, I forgot the name of the test. But yeah, that's that's the test. So it's like basically a battery of feeling things. So it's mm -hmm. not like a hardcore right. quantitative biomarker, which is so badly is needed. But um, the hot baths have also been shown. So heat shock proteins. Which do like amazing? There's so many amazing things that heat shock proteins do. They've been shown to prevent muscle um, atrophy, uh, and that's you know in the brain they're so important, like preventing proteins from aggregating in the brain. Um, that's how I first got in. That, like one of my first biological experiments ever, because I was a chemistry major in, in college, so I was doing all chemistry stuff, organic chemistry and like chemistry. But um, after I graduated, I went to work at the Salk Institute for Biological S uh, Sciences in La Jolla, and I was working in an aging lab. And um, one of the first experiments I had that I was doing, like one of my first projects, was we were taking the human amyloid beta um, gene and, and injecting them in these worms, these nematode worms that only live like 14 or 15 days. And we were making them form amyloid plaques in their muscle. So like basically you, you look at these little worms under a microscope, so it's only like half a, half a millimeter. You know, they move around and as like they get older and they're aging, they don't move as quickly. You know, they're kind of slower, a little more decrepit. Uh, but anyways, you give them this amyloid beta, and after like a couple of days, they become paralyzed, where they're like laying in their, their little petri dish plate on the E. coli food you, you're, you're giving them, and they kind of just move around just to feed, like their nose is just moving around. And so um, when we would give them tons of heat shock proteins in addition to the amyloid, totally reversed it, like completely. Hmm. Like they would move around and be young. So anyways, heat shock proteins play a role in like neurodegenerative disease, also some links to like improving um, depression in animal studies. But uh, can you measure heat shock, so proteins heat shock proteins in the bath versus sauna? Yeah, so that's been done. So the sauna, I know of one study where people that sat in a 163 degree Fahrenheit sauna for 30 minutes had heat shock proteins. Le their levels were 50 percent higher over baseline. And um, which is great. And that usually like animal studies show that that can they can stay elevated for like 48 hours after that. Um, there's a hot bath study where they also elevated. It wasn't quite as high, but it was like, you know, 40 or so percent higher than baseline levels. And it was 104 degrees. But this study, um, instead of doing it from the shoulders down where I told you about the depression, it was like only 20, 30 minutes. It was like from the waist down. So they had to stay in there for an hour. It's like a jacuzzi, mm -hmm. you know, where you're just sitting there from the waist down and like, that's hot. Like staying in 104, that's, that's pretty hot. Um, but heat shock proteins did increase. So I think... You know, for, for people that don't have access to a sauna, um, that hot baths absolutely are a, a good a, a modality for heat stress. And I used it for a long time. Like I said, I just got a sauna. Like I've, I've been I've made a career about talking about saunas, you know, and I just got one like last month. So like like I understand what it's like to not have a sauna and to have to use hot baths. But I was also using the gym saunas. But right now it's like. There's no gyms that are open, so yeah, it is. Uh, hot baths are like the only the only really choice if you don't have a hot sauna, a now, home sauna. What about cold shock proteins? And the, I mean, how much difference is it 
between taking a really cold shower, ice bath versus uh, something like cryo cryotherapy? Like the place that I took you to. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's differences in, in, I mean, so it depends on how long you're staying in a cold, you know, water, like cold shower, like actually being submerged, like from like, if you're like in the ocean or something or a lake and you're like from your shoulders down, like that's probably much more powerful than just having the shower on. But by the way, the shower, like some days I'm like, what does it matter? This, this is not cold at all. You know, it's just so variable where well, it's just like. you live in Southern, Southern California. <laughs> you live on the, right, the border of Mexico. But yesterday, so, so every, so most of the time now I shower right after the sun. That's like my shower time now. Um, and so like I, it's, I do about six minutes and it's so easy for me. I've it totally have adapted and I'm not sure if I've just totally adapted or, if it's just like my faucet doesn't get as like just doesn't get cold that cold like it really doesn't. Uh, today I took a sh- cold shower um, from home and I, my son is not there and I did it just because I wanted to have the mood effects the norepinephrine that's been shown to be increased uh, and it was much colder. But then again, it was a different shower. Mm. I'm not sure if it's because I didn't have the hot before you know beforehand like the being hot. And like getting in the cold shower, like it just feels really good. It's a nice shock. But oh. the cold shock, you asked me cold shock proteins. The, that, that hasn't really been measured in humans. Um, what is measured most of the time with cold shock is norepinephrine release. And norepinephrine in plasma, and there has been studies correlating norepinephrine in plasma upon cold exposure, norepinephrine release in plasma to um, in the brain, uh, where it's involved with like mood and focus and attention. So um, there's been studies where like you could do a two-minute cryo- Whatever the average temperature, it's really cold. Minus two forty is something we like went. that. Yeah, and then that could be compared to like you know a longer a longer duration in fifty degree you know I think fifty degree Fahrenheit water or something like that. Like I don't remember the exact time, but but it is comparable. But you have to stay in a longer duration. So some people prefer ice baths. Some athletes prefer the ice bath versus cryotherapy, even though it's it's probably more painful because it lasts a lot longer. Oh, it's painful. Have you done those ice baths? No. Oh, I've done it. I've only I mean, done the cryo. So I've. Have you ever done like cold shower after your sauna? Yes. Do you like it? I like it a lot. Yeah. I like it particularly after hot yoga. After hot yoga. Yeah. Well, after hot yoga, especially in the winter when it's actually cold, the water's cold. That's when I love it. There's something mood enhancing. I mean, these things also affect the immune system, by the mm-hmm. way, which is also very relevant, both cold and, right. and hot. They both have been shown to increase um, lymphocyte numbers and also like other myeloid cells and stuff um, in people. Uh, but but like there's something like I've done the sauna and then gone into an ice bath and then, you know, it's just really it's hard. It's cold. I mean, you feel good, but man, you know, I think just like. The, guy, the guy's house I was doing it, I was trying to impress him. So, <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm hardcore. I can do this. But it was it was pretty intense. I do I do eventually want to get some kind of like, they have those like, like ice, those baths that you can like regulate, you like regulate the water temperature. Yeah, you know? there's ones that you plug in yeah. and they're, they're not ice baths at exactly. all. They just cool the That's water. That's just too much work, like ice and baths. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs>